What's up you guys? Welcome back to Average Bros Media. It has been a minute since we filmed a video and damn, did I miss you guys. We're back on our regular schedule and into the grind of making content for you guys every week. And we've got a real special video for you guys today, so you're gonna wanna be sure to stick around. All right, so before we go too far into the video, for those of you who are new or maybe haven't seen a lot of content on this car, this is my 2005 Legacy GT wagon. Now having owned this car for eight years, we've certainly been through our ups and downs and it being my daily driver, I think I tend to forget how incredible this car actually is. Because let's be honest, going to and from work straight on a freeway really doesn't allow you to showcase you know, the strength of a car or what makes it so awesome. So when we got to go out on the Northwest Express Rally and you know drove 3,000 some miles in six days going to and from Seattle to get there and going on the rally event, obviously I really got to remember why I love this car so much. And that's because this car just performs so well. Every modification that I've done to it has been geared around performance without taking away from the drivability of the car. And I think that's what I love so much about it. And not to mention, it just sounds good. So with that, as I've fallen in love with this car all over again, it got me thinking about what are the next steps for the build on this car. Now, I'm thinking long term. This isn't over the next month, uh, more so over probably what's the next year. But I do have quite a bit of modification that I want to do to this car to continue to make it my own and just switch up the style from what we've gotten used to looking at on this car. So let's dive into the build plans. So first and foremost, we're going to talk about the exterior and the stuff that I want to change there. So if you've looked at the front end up close, it definitely needs a repaint. There's chips on the hood, there's chips all around this grill, and the bumper could definitely use just a fresh coat of paint on it. So that's on my list. Along with that, I wanna swap out some of the parts on here and get a little bit of a carbon fiber accent theme going. So if you look around the grill here, this whole surround here that's all chipped up, there's actually a, a guy that makes a carbon fiber replacement for that. So I'd like to replace that, as well as the rear garnish on the rear end. So let's go ahead and hop around to the back. So with the rear end, one of the things that absolutely has to go is this bumper. The USDM bumper sticks out quite a bit, and I prefer the look of the JDM bumper that sits in a little bit further, probably two to three inches more. If you're familiar with these cars, you've likely seen that bumper. So I wanna go with that, as well as swap out this garnish here for the JDM garnish that matches up with the tail lights. Now with that, we're gonna carry on the carbon fiber theme that I was talking about up front, and there's a little centerpiece that goes on that JDM garnish that's typically kind of a silver color like this. We're gonna do that in carbon fiber as well. Now with the shorter bumper, What's really been keeping me from doing this all along is that my exhaust, the Gretti system that's on there is gonna to be too long and I absolutely love how this system sounds as well as how it looks. But if we go with the new bumper, then a new exhaust is gonna to have to come and I think I'm gonna go with the nameless like Lewis has on his car because that thing sounds sick and they make a stand style fitment for this car that would work well with that JDM bumper. So the last piece of the rear that I wanna transform is this wing here. So the same guy that makes the carbon fiber pieces that I wanna do here and around the grill also makes kind of an aftermarket style wing that has a little bit more lip to it. And he does that in a fiberglass and carbon fiber option. If I could figure out some way to kind of show the carbon fiber a little bit to tie it in with the rest of the car, I'd consider going that option. But at this point, I'm probably just thinking the fiberglass one is the move. So the next order of business is I wanna swap out these wheels and tires. The tires that are on here are kind of on their last leg. So I need to be looking at some new tires anyway. And I've had these wheels forever. I think I've had them for like four years or so. I get tons of people asking what they are, tons of compliments, but after a certain while, I just get tired of looking at the same wheel and kind of want to mix it up. So what I'm thinking about swapping onto this is the Anki RS05RR. It's one of my absolute favorite wheels. I think it looks incredible. And we'll probably go with at least an 18 by eight and a half, which will add a half an inch over these Rygenes um, and go with a little bit bigger tire. So we've got a 225 on there right now. And I want to go with at least a 235 or 245 to get a little bit more grip into the car. So I'm curious what you guys think on that. Um, with the new wheels, I want to paint the brakes. Uh, I talked to you guys about painting those brake calipers and I talked a lot about how I want to keep it more OEM plus. That's just always been my style. And then I saw this car that like had these bright yellow calipers on it with a dark blue like this. 
and totally fell in love with it. And I'm thinking I wanna break the mold of what I usually do and maybe test out something a little bit more wild. So with that kind of gunmetal color wheel, I'm thinking a nice yellow caliper could look really nice. And then I'd have to decide on what color I wanna go with the Brembo lettering. But I would love to hear what you guys think about the potential of a yellow caliper on this car. So with the new wheel and tire setup, this Coney strut and Swift spring combo is just not gonna work. I'm a little worried because it works so well with this, but if I go any wider, which is what I'm planning on doing with the wheel and tire setup, then I'm not gonna have the adjustability that I need to make that setup work. So we're gonna swap out the struts and springs. And ever since Lewis got the KW coilovers for his car, I was 100% certain that that was what I was gonna put on this car. They feel excellent. We've been thrilled with the quality of them. Uh, it's an easy install. And it just seemed like the straightforward answer. But this is where I know it's gonna be a little bit of a hot topic for you guys. For as much as I wanna put a coilover on this car and I know I'll get the performance that I'm looking for out of it, I can't lie, I'm a little intrigued by air and I've thought about putting an air ride setup on this car. Now I've heard you can get equal performance out of an air ride setup from a coilover setup and I wanna find out for myself. On top of that, I'm not really the type of guy that wants to have my car you know, lay in frame or anything like that. That's not what I want bags for, but I do like the idea of being able to lower it down to a height that looks good while it's parked at shows and then raise it up when I'm gonna be driving around town so I don't have to bottom out. So this next part is a part that's been on my bucket list for the Legacy GT for a very long time. Now I wanna swap out the stock five speed that's in this car for a Spec B six speed. I had a Spec B for a long time and drove that six speed around and much prefer that transmission and it's a bit stronger as well. So with the added power that we have in this car, I think it'd be a nice upgrade. The clutch that I have in here is a Spec Stage 3 clutch, and it's got over 20,000 miles on it, so I figure sometime in the next year or so, when this clutch does go, we'll spend a little bit more money and upgrade to a full six-speed swap with a new clutch and everything, uh, and really have the setup that I've always wanted for this car. Now the last piece of this build, assuming nothing goes wrong prior, is that I want to do a built bottom end on this engine. We basically touched everything we can up top. New rails, new fuel lines, fuel injectors, fuel pump, bigger turbo, intercooler, kind of all the full bolt-ons. Now, with 130,000 miles on this engine, I'm well aware that something could go wrong tomorrow, it could go wrong in the next year. But I think it makes the most sense that when this engine does need work and when that time comes, is to kind of beef up the bottom end to support the power we have now, and if we want to turn it up more in the future. So I'd like to go with some sort of IAG short block down the road, so that's kind of on the radar. Definitely not gonna be something that's happening in the next month or so. But just so you guys know, that's kind of the direction that I'm heading with the car. All right, you guys, we're gonna wrap up the video here, but I hope you guys enjoyed seeing some more content of the Legacy GT. I look forward to hearing what you guys have to say about the build plans, whether you think we should go static versus begged, or just in general, what you guys think about kind of the direction that I'm headed with this car. Now, like I said, this isn't gonna just happen overnight. It's not something that's gonna happen in the next month, hopefully over the next year, but money doesn't grow on trees, so we're gonna make this happen as we can. But that's the direction I'm thinking of the car. So until next time, peace out, and we'll see you soon.